Hey guys, welcome back. If you didn't see the last episode, in the last one we covered unbolting everything from under the hood, unhooking it, and removing the engine and transmission. And now we need to clean and paint the engine bay before the LS motor can go in. So I'm gonna try a few different methods of degreasing this engine bay, find out which one works best. So we're gonna jump over there and get started. So this engine bay really isn't that bad. There's not a lot of heavy buildup. The worst part is down here on the frame and the cross member. And some of this stuff, we're gonna have to scrape it before we put any cleaner on there. That'll make that process a lot faster if we scrape off the heavy stuff and then apply the degreaser. The stuff on the painted surfaces, I don't really want to scrape a whole lot. Although over here, the paint is peeling off from that brake master cylinder leaking. So I might have to actually break that down to bare metal before we go any further. For the most part, I'm gonna to try to avoid breaking through the paint because sometimes when you repaint over that, it will lift the old paint and bubble or start peeling up. And I have a couple different degreasers. I'm thinking about testing them out over this engine bay. Um, then we'll rinse it off with water. And I also have a hot water pressure washer that I'll use afterwards to make sure that there is no chemical residue before we go back with paint. And even though I'm replacing it, I'm also gonna degrease the steering gear because I don't know when I'm gonna have my new gear. I don't want that greasy piece sitting there because every time I'll brush up against it, I'll get grease on my hands and arms. So here's the variety of cleaners I'm planning on using. I got the super clean, which I believe this is pretty tough. They recommend diluting it, but for stronger applications, you can run full strength. It's not recommended for use on aluminum. So that means that it must be pretty caustic. Purple power, a lot of people use this. It works great. I do have a small spray bottle for that. For this, I'm gonna have to find a bottle, rinse it out and put this in there. I also have the foaming engine cleaner the aluminum wheel cleaner, I'm gonna try using it on the aluminum parts of the LS motor to clean those up. This one's pretty caustic as well because it's not recommended for clear coated or painted or highly polished wheels. I have a variety of brushes, a few scrapers. So with all of this stuff here, we should be able to get the engine bay cleaned up and ready for paint. I'm gonna spray the left side of the engine bay with the Super Clean, and I have this at full strength. And I'm just gonna give it a quick coat. I'll spray the other side with the Purple Power, give that a quick coat, and then while I'm waiting for some of that stuff to soak in, I'm gonna start scraping down on the frame rail, and then I'll apply more down here. Make sure you're not spraying it up onto the painted surface. Since it is a caustic cleaner, it might etch the clear coat. This side I'm gonna spray with the Purple Power. Now I do have an open bulkhead right here. I don't want any corrosion inside of there. So when I spray this, I'm gonna avoid spraying it directly into that connector. While that stuff's soaking, I'm gonna scrape this cross member in the frame. Now I'm gonna spray this frame rail and cross member, let that soak in a little bit. I got some of the big stuff off, so it has a fighting chance of soaking down to the frame. I'm gonna let this soak for a little bit and then I'll push the car outside and rinse it all down and see what we're left with. 
Now I haven't done a whole lot of scraping, just the heavy stuff on the cross member, the, mainly the stuff on the firewall. I wanna see what will happen with just spraying it on and letting it soak. I'll let it sit for 10 minutes, come and check it. If it's starting to dry out, then I will apply a light coat again and let it sit for a little longer. And we'll push it outside and rinse it. Oh yeah, that stuff is loosening up nicely. Just as I'm applying the second coat on the left side of the engine bay here, my left, not the vehicle's left. The, uh, the grease that was on the firewall is just kind of running down the firewall. I didn't see that so much on the other side, but maybe this was a, uh, a thinner grease. It hadn't been kicked on as long. Or the super clean cleaner is doing a better job. I think where we'll see the biggest difference between the two products is on the cross member and the frame because both sides were pretty equally greasy. Now I'm just gonna spray it off with the garden hose first and see how well we did. There's a few things I'm gonna wanna avoid. The bulkhead connector, I don't want water getting into there. Some of these grommets are kinda loose in the firewall, so I'm not gonna direct a lot of water there. Um, where the clutch shaft comes through, there's a little bit of play around the grommet. Stuff like that, you don't want a bunch of water going into the interior. So we will avoid those areas with the direct stream. Well, I'm pretty impressed with the results. This side over here is the side that had the super clean chemical. The other side had the purple power. They seem pretty equal. There is a little bit more heavy deposits down here that I might have to reapply or scrub. Some of the paint is coming off over here, but that's where that brake fluid had been leaking. But up above the brake master cylinder, that grease did not come off using the purple power. Since I have both of them, I will use both continuously because they seem to be fairly equal. I'm gonna apply another coat and then I'm gonna give it a quick run with the brush. Some of the stuff down there, I might hit with the wire brush just because the paint's already flaking off. And then I'll push it back outside again and hit it with the hot water pressure washer. So going over it that one extra time with the brush and some more cleaner really made a big difference. Got a lot of that lower stuff off of the firewall there. I'm gonna go ahead and get the hot water pressure washer set up and then I'll go ahead and steam clean that engine bay the rest of the way. And then we can push it in and we have to wait for it to dry before we can paint. But we at least wanna make sure everything's clean. We wanna get all that cleaner back off of there because that cleaner could affect the paint adhesion. So up next is steam cleaning the engine bay. So here are the results after steam cleaning the engine bay 
and two applications of engine degreaser. It looks pretty good. I don't see any heavy buildup or even small buildup. There might be a few spots I have to touch up before I can paint. And also that spot that's damaged on the firewall from the brake fluid will have to scuff up as well. At this point, I could probably leave it be or wait until it dries and go back and paint the engine bay, which is what we're planning on doing. There's a few things I'll have to take off like the washer reservoir over there and then this wiring harness. Get that stuff out of the way. We'll tape off the fenders and the cowling and then we'll spray paint the engine bay, black it out and also paint this frame rail. Now, since there's a lot of bare metal on the frame, we are gonna have to use a self etching primer or a paint that will adhere to bare metal. There's a few things I'm not quite sure about like the motor mount perches I don't think we're using those anymore. I'll have to look in the kit when it shows up to see if the new motor mounts bolt to those or if we replace those perches altogether. So that's it for this video. Um, I went through how to clean the engine bay, compared a couple of products. The engine bay is nice and clean. I am now wet, cold, and dirty. So I'm gonna stop here for today. If you wanna see how this project goes along, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.